So a lot of code editors provide a way to show an indent line which marks what code is actually contained inside of each indented block. Now, inside of languages like say Java, C, C++, JavaScript, this is sort of just aesthetic because those languages are bracket based. But if you're working with something indent based like say Python, this can actually be incredibly useful. So today we're looking at a plugin called indent line, which basically adds this functionality into Vim. So the way that this works is pretty straightforward. So let's say that we have a bit of text here and we keep writing some text. And then on the next line here, we decide to actually indent a bit. So it's not gonna look exactly like this out of the box. I've got leading spaces enabled. So I'll go and show you what that looks like disabled in just a bit. But basically, if we indent again, this point right here is gonna be marked as a point in our indentation. And then if we indent again, this point right here is gonna be marked as another point, so on and so forth. So let's just indent to this point right here and then start writing some stuff. So as we can see, it's very clear where stuff has actually been indented to. So if we indent more, it's very, very obvious. Even if we go, let's say all the way down here and then start writing again, so we can very easily see that this bit right here lines up perfectly with this bit right here. So these are contained inside of the same indentation block. Now my indentation is set to two characters, but this is based on whatever your tab settings are inside of Vim. This isn't actually a thing for the plugin itself. So I'm not gonna try to explain how tab settings work inside of Vim. I'm gonna leave a link down below to a lecture that does an absolutely exceptional job at it because I couldn't explain it well. So. The short version is if we go and change these variables here all to four, then we should be tabbing four characters. So if we go back into the Vim buffer and I press tab this time, as we're gonna see, it tabs four characters. And if we tab again, it's gonna show the bar right after the fourth. And then the bar is gonna be at this point again, right here. Now, I would also recommend going and enabling expand tab. So what expand tab is gonna do is basically make it so if you press the tab key, it's gonna be converted into spaces rather than being a tab key. This just makes it so this plugin actually works because for whatever reason, the developer decided not to support tab characters and only support spaces. So this is just a good thing to have all around because tab characters are annoying to work with. But if you do wanna use this plugin properly, you will have to run this option or just always press the space key. Now, as for the commands that come with this plugin, there's not really anything that notable to mention. I guess you can turn off the leading spaces. So if we try to run leading space, and as we can see, there's disable, enable, and toggle. So let's just go disable. And this is closer to what it's gonna look like out of the box. So we can also go and basically just disable the plugin by going indent line. And as we're gonna see, we have disable, enable, reset, and toggle. So disable, enable, and toggle are pretty self-explanatory. Reset is basically just gonna make it so it tries to re-render everything, which you might need to do if there's a graphical error for some reason. I haven't run into any issues, but I also haven't used this on like 10,000 line files, for example. So if we just run disable, then the plugin is basically going to be disabled. And this is what Vim would just normally look like. So let's go and bring the plugin back. So indent lines, enable, and there we go. So the main meat for this plugin is in the configuration. So let's go over to that file. So right now I'm actually in my NVIM folder. So let's go into the file I have my config in. Obviously, normally most people are going to have it in their init.vim or their vimrc, but I'm, I'm just doing weird things because that's sort of what I want to do. Anyway, so by default, I'm not actually showing the indent line at the first level. So if we go and enable that, basically what that's going to do is instead of having a blank character at the start, it's actually gonna show the indent line right at the start as well. So this actually makes it so the dots actually line up if you are running leading spaces, because otherwise there's four dots and then three dots from every point on. Basically the reason there's four dots is because I'm not showing the indent line at the first level, because I don't really think there's a point to show it at the first level. It's pretty obvious it's at the first level because it's at the first level. Now out of the box, it's gonna run on every single file and every single buffer. So. I would highly, highly recommend not doing that because that can get very, very annoying. So if we go into this and then bring up my help pages, as we'll notice, we actually have the indent line running inside of my help. And you probably don't wanna see that. It looks a bit weird and doesn't really serve any value. And if you have things like say a uh, file tree, it's gonna be in the file tree. I would recommend not doing that. Basically what you're going to wanna do 
is I recommend using the indent line file type exclude and buff type exclude as well. So I'm disabling on the file types that are VimWiki, CRC Explorer, help, undo tree and diff, and the buff types that are help and terminal. So terminal is the built-in Vim terminal. Now to check those is pretty easy. So if we run the command set file type question mark, that will actually tell us the type of the file. So in this case, this file is a help file. And if we try to run it over here, it should say that this is a, a Vim file, I think, but I'm not 100% sure. As we can see, yeah, that is a Vim file. So if you ran this on, say, a JavaScript file, it would say this is JavaScript, a C file, it would be C, so on and so forth. And to check the buff type, it's pretty straightforward as well. Basically, you do set buff type question mark. And as we can see, the buff type is help. And this one, if we do set buff type question mark, this time the buff type is set to nothing. So this is why I'm actually using file type for things like my Vim wiki and things like that, because generally regular files don't actually have a buff type set, but things like say your terminal and your help pages, things like that generally do. If however you just wanna run it on specific file types rather than excluding file types, that is done with the indent line underscore file type argument. Now. I think this one's kind of annoying to set because if I want to use this for, say, another language, I then have to go and add that support in rather than with the exclude version where I know that these are just the things I want to exclude and this list isn't going to grow. And you can also exclude based on buffer name. So the way that we check that is by doing echo at percent and that's going to basically output the file name in the case of a regular file. If we run it on something like my file tree, however, it's going to have a different defined name. So at percent, this time it's inside a bracket CRC dash explorer dash one. So I know that in the examples for this, they were basically excluding nerd tree through this method. Personally, I feel like the file type exclusion is a little bit easier though. Now the indent level option here is basically how many levels of indentation to show before it basically stops showing lines. Now, if you're setting it to 10, that's already way too many. So 10 would be, where is 10? Here. Please don't use 10 levels of indentation. Your code is going to be really, really annoying to read. There are ways you can avoid this. So just, so just don't do that. I would probably realistically set it to maybe six or seven, and that's really, really pushing it. Maybe five is probably the best point. Now I would recommend leaving the second seal option set to one because this will define whether the plugin can actually override your cursor concealing settings or not. So if you don't do this, basically it's gonna have a hard time actually working properly. So basically what this is gonna do is define how the lines actually get shown while you're actually hovering over that line. So by default, the lines are gonna be shown when you're in insert mode, normal mode and command mode, but you can also go and mess with how visual mode actually works as well. Now. With conceal level set to two, it's actually gonna sort of break how visual mode actually works. So let's actually add some indentation here. And if we go into visual mode, as you're gonna see, even though I'm on visual line, it's not actually highlighting the entire line. And that's because this is actually taking priority. So if you wanna go and see how the conceal settings actually work, there's a bit of information inside of the Vim documentation on this. This is actually something just built into Vim regularly. So if you wanna go and see what the different modes do, Basically, they're all described here. Now, it's probably fine to just leave it on the default settings. I've really had no issues with that. And once you start moving away from the default settings, you sort of have to actually understand how this is actually working. Okay, next up we have the characters being used for the indent line. So you can actually use a single character or a list of characters. So if you have a list of characters, basically it's gonna cycle through the list and then when it gets to the end of the list, it's gonna go back to the start. Basically, this just adds a bit more visual indication of what's actually happening. But if you just want a single character, basically you can use this option right here. So indent line underscore char instead of the char list. And it's just gonna use that single character. Pretty straightforward. I don't really think I need to explain it that much. As we can see, it's just using that one character now. And leading space is how I have these dots enabled. So if you wanna do that, basically indent line underscore leading space enabled, set that to one, and then you can set the leading space char. It does slightly bother me that they're not sort of named consistently, but it's fine, I guess. And this doesn't just have to be something you can normally see on your keyboard. Basically anything supported inside of UTF-8 encoding is gonna work just fine. So you may want to use something like this Unicode dot instead because this one is a bit more centered than just a bullet point. So let's use this one and go 
restart this buffer. As you can see, now the dots are a bit more centered and I feel like this looks a little bit better. Now, as for the rest of the configuration, it's basically just configuring colors. So I don't really think there's that much to say. Here are your 16 color configurations. Here are your 256 color configurations. Here's your true color configuration. And then if you, for some reason, want a background color behind the actual line, don't do that. It looks really bad. You can do that as well. So let's actually go and enable that and see what it looks like. So it looks like this. Don't do that. It's a bad idea but the option is there if you want to do it. So this is very much an aesthetic plugin and is very much going to be on a person by person basis on whether this is actually something useful. Personally, I think it's actually kind of neat. I typically like to run it without the leading spaces though, just because I don't think the leading spaces actually add in any extra value. So I think that's pretty much everything to say about this. I don't actually have any issues with this. It does exactly what it claims to do and does it about as well as I could expect. So I don't have anything negative to say about it. So I think that's pretty much everything for me. But before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Chris, Joachim, Corbinian, Andrew, Craig, Nathan, Montserrat, Chukabento, Joseph, Peter, D. Road, Tony, Brennan, Donald, John, Merrick, Mikkel, ne uh, Nate, Dog, Nephite, Poe, Tease, and Zilver. I'm not going to do a re-record because I want to go make some lunch. So I... What... What... Uh... Go support me. I've got, <laughs> I've got my Leap of subscribe star, Patreon, all that stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over Tea, available basically anywhere. And this channel is available on Library, Odyssey, BitChute. If you want to go watch my videos on a platform that isn't YouTube. As I said, I'm going to go make some lunch now. And I'm out.